This coverage is brought to you by Rami Rent. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to some more disc golf media coverage. We are coming at you with the fifth stop on the European Pro Tour back in Finland for the 2022 Turku Open. Got the round three final round MPO lead card coverage. I'm Tony Farrow. And joining him, Connor Wood. And then Kainan Disc Golf Park so far been a beautiful stage for these competitors here. As we wrap up another tournament, one of these men will be crowned your Turku Open 2022 champion. And I'm excited to see who we have playing here today on the lead card. No Great doubt. scoring conditions as well. Oh yeah. For this man in particular, Seppo Payu, our leader, double digits each round here. Let's see if he can keep that pace. Well, he's got that spin going like last time. We see joining him, Rasmus Saukoripi, a uh, very consistent player so far on the European Pro Tour. We've seen him in quite a lot of coverage. 996 rated, smooth game. And another familiar face to our lead card coverage, Piri Jutsen, 1015. Got lots of game out of this guy, lots of distance. Excited to see him on this course. And he did take the hot round yesterday at 13 under. We see joining us Jesse Niemannen as well. The forehand connoisseur, he knows what he is doing. He really makes them work. Great card we have here. Well, we take a Taking look the at sole the top four positions. Oh yeah. We got two stroke lead for Seppo Paiu over Rasmus. Uh, but, but Piri is just behind him. Tight race. Still a big battle to come. Anyone's battle, and they can chase, chase, chase. Oh, yeah. Starts on hole one. The attackable par five. Got it. First shot off the tee. Want to make it through these two trees. Somewhere out into that opening. Setting yourself up for the second tunnel shot to get out of the forest. Opening it up for this wide open approach. Not too much danger here except for possibly the wind and that drop off that's behind the basket. But you know my big question of the weekend is, is somebody going to go for the eagle? The infamous three, I knew you were going to bring it up. This is where strokes really count, I think. It's possible that we see someone try Seppo, of course, on the tee first to get us started. Clean backhand Heiser line. With such a lead, I think he's going to be absolutely happy with a in the fairway play. Yeah, when you're leading, you just take your birdies, keep it moving. Let somebody else try to get that eagle and screw it up, most likely. <laughs> I don't think we'll see this man screw up this shot. Rasmus Alcoripi to the tee. No, he's also looking to be going something slow, something overstable. Did catch an early tree, but he kicked out back into the fairway. Not too bad. Another backhand, it looks like, being lined up. Again, probably not going for the eagle with the mid-range, but that's okay. That's the smart play. <laughs> it's easy for us to say that at home, you know. On the course, podium spots at play, it's a different matter. Let's look at the ground play on that. Piri just gets a soft hyzer landing and great little skip up there. Beautiful forward push. This guy may go for it. Come on, Yese. Don't let me down. He looks like a man with a plan. As we see a nice Anheuser forehand release, that's riding out nicely. You see it just flatten out at the end due to the forehand. Shot, that's a great, great shot up the fairway. I think the furthest we've seen on coverage so far off the first throw. Yeah, furthest by far, I would say. That's a... That got a nice slide out of it, and he is in the tunnel from your second shot. That's really good. But, wow, Rasmus just puring the gap with a standstill Anheuser. He will be sitting pretty for that third shot. And Seppo has opened up his ankle nicely, you may recall, in round two. 
he was in a very similar position and got a lot of power on his second all the way up to the hill. That one not getting the same amount of flight. Now it looked to be a little low out of the hand, but he is through the gap. That's that's the biggest thing. He's out there in the open, just a little bit more distance than he wanted. Beauty up now with a sidearm flexor. Couldn't really tell where that ended up, but... It had the height. I'm sure it got a full flex out back to the right side. Difficult to see the distance, though. We'll see. Yes, they now try to break through. Man, he almost got out of the gap. Look at that. But oh, oh. Gets caught up on those two tall, two small trees on the left side. And unfortunately, we'll still be throwing from within the tree line. Yeah, to be honest, the backhand would have been the better play from that <laughs> position. But he is a sidearm dominant player, and I'm sure he wanted to get as much D as he could. Unfortunate, but still opportunity for the birdie with a good third shot here. As Wow. Wow, he does that nicely. Smooth grind off the rock there. Great scramble from uh, back there with a standstill flex forehand. For see sure. Resmus here going for the big hyzer. That's not it looks, looking looks, bad. Looks nice and wide, a great height and power. As that swings down, maybe edge of circle, if not within. Another I would, great approach. I'd give that within the circle. That was a well-executed throw. Seppo... Also going hyzer, looking good, maybe inside a tad. Oh, and some ground play that he did not want. Leave him a little outside the circle, I would say, for his birdie putt. I was also scared on the inside angle. Just out of his hand, the release looked much further left than we saw Rasmus go, who was uh, dead center. We see Piri now looking for his forehand approach. Little chip hyzer. That's what you want. That's four or five meters out. Not bad. And we see the wind picking up just a little bit here today at the top of this hill. It's Seppo contending with the wind from circle two. Puts it up there, but not quite in. He'll be tapping in, I believe, a par. Yes, eh, for birdie. Come on oh, now. Yeah. Get it started. Huge little step putt half stepper what a great play for your confidence on hole one round three lead card you are chasing these guys and you throw in the putt from there that's a really big boost to the confidence oh yeah that's putting the pressure on them early Ooh, Rasmus answers back with his birdie putt that looked confident Absolutely. I think that was just under the band. Tons of power, tons of height. Made sure to put that one right in. Piri now from about six meters. Ooh. Maybe a bit shorter there, but he taps that birdie in nicely. Almost so wanted to pop back out. <laughs> all of these guys make their putts. Seppo unfortunately went down the hill on the left on his approach and then missed it back up, leaving him a par. That's one stroke for the rest of these guys here chasing him. Battle gets a little tighter. Let's move on to hole two. 225 meter par four. Wide open, just have the OB stakes that are carving out your fairway. Gonna have a big distance hyzer off the tee, setting you up for your approach shot, whether you're gonna go sidearm in or backhand, over the OB possibly. Either way, control that angle. Try not to skip too far. OB does wrap around the back. This hole can have teeth. We have seen it, but it is scorable. The wind has picked up, but I think most of these guys will be trying to throw one angle hyzers. That, oh, that does was flatten bad. out on Rasmus there. As I'm mentioning the shape, I think all of these guys want to be throwing very overstable in this wind, and uh, that should allow them to negate some of the effects by just throwing a one angle shot. You see Piri here with the adjustment, 
still flips it up a little bit, but gets a very strong leftwards finish. Yeah, that's what you want right there. Yes, A up now. First sidearm we've seen on this T. A little hyzer flip, soft flex. So beautiful to see that out of a sidearm. So controlled. Just perfect angle control, height, a pure distance shot low to the ground. Well, here's a pure distance shot low to the ground. Huge hyzer bomb, big skip. That center cut. Great and shot. We'll see. That was a great shot. We'll see how much Rasmus has left here, as he seems to be lining up the forehand approach. He is directly behind that OB line, and will need to carry quite far to bring it back in bounds. Yeah, he was looking to be going over the OB probably the whole way here. I, I, I think so. Distance control really mattering here. Wow. As he puts it beautifully in the center fairway, maybe deep circle too, but great recovery to try and secure his par still. Yeah, that would be an amazing par save if he gets it from there. Yes, I know, with the sidearm approach coming in. Beautifully sitting in the circle. He should be about seven, eight meters away for his birdie putt. These guys are navigating the OB really nicely here. Perfect display of distance. Ooh, that's Control that off. looks very high. Yeah. Just a bit nose up, and that begins to fade out quickly. Unfortunately, he did not cross OB long, it looks like, so we'll be playing just from about 15 meters up there. No. Another big throw. That is the question. Are they going to give it to him across, or are they going to tell him no? Because, to be honest, I don't think that made it. We'll see if Seppo makes it here. That is swinging in beautifully as he sends <laughs> clouds flying, sprays dust. That's how you landing. get it to stop. Just hit it against the upward slope. Just make the dirt go flying. Awesome hit, shot. Dig a chunk out of the hill there. We'll see Piri now hopefully make the correction. No, this also get looks... get down, get down. Oh. oh. That one definitely did cross in bounds, though. That's for sure. He is going to be up by the basket, but unfortunately he should be putting for a six. Oh, Rasmus, you can see how much that par save meant to him. He gave himself the chance after an early OB and just a little bit low on a very long putt. It was a good bid. We'll see Yesse now if he can secure his birdie with a great forehand approach and forehand drive. When's he going to forehand putt? <laughs> if he doesn't great need to, if he's going to be there, making them like that, dead center. keep smashing them in there. Two for two now. Seppo, get his self on the board. Seppo now. There you go. Good clean putt for Seppo. Get his confidence up. Let's see Rasmus clean up the bogey. Great poise. And Piri now to clean up. A double bogue, I believe. You are correct. He takes a six on this par four with double OB. Yeah, tough start. Tough start. But a lot of OB on that hole. And that's a tricky one. Like you said, it's shown some teeth and it didn't stop today. Tell us about hole three. Well, he can get one back here. This is only 125 meter par three. Nothing in your way. Do have that OB long and left again, but these guys are just going to be spiking in a hyzer. Wind not too heavy today, so I don't think that's going to really play too big of a factor. These guys all have the power to just smash it in. You see, yes, they up first with two through two birdies so far as he tries to get his third a big forehand flex seems to be fading out a little bit early but he gets up there i think he's a little bit shorter than he would like to be but that is certainly a putt 
Yeah, circle two, that's a tough sidearm shot. You're going over OB almost the whole time if you're really going to push it to the basket. In the wind as well, 125 meters. We see Seppo opting oh. for a pure hyzer. Oh, but that is way wide. That is not what you want to see. I don't think he came back in the fairway, did he? I mean, he's just right side, just way right. Maybe pin high, but man, miscue or so, just on the didn't read the wind right or something. But Oh, but Rasmus with the correction is he just <laughs> calculates it and drops it right by the basket, curls it around for good measure. No doubt. Get that one back, Rasmus. All right, Beauty, also to get one back. Not bad angle right here. Got the swoop out of it. Oh, yeah. I like yeah. the width and the power and the placement. Yeah, he got the nose up on it, which really helped it to just glide and fade over left. Oh, man. Seppo is, is in what a heap of trouble. I didn't know how obstructed he would be from where he landed, but it did not look friendly. All right. I'm sure he just wants to make sure he takes his three here. Pitches out nicely. Good scramble from a very awkward stance. Yeah, solid execution. Come on, yes, egg. Oh, he looked like he wanted that one even more than the first two. Great bid. Just a little early left. Beauty up now to secure his birdie. Get one back from that unfortunate double bogey. I like to see him taking his time. A great putt. Nice bounce back. Every putt matters. That's the way to do it. Always focused. And he's put himself back to zero for the round with two birdies, one double bogey. He's yet to take a par. That's uh, He's still set up for a, a good round now. Good little roller coaster ride right off the bat. And Yese taking a stress-free three, his first par of this final round. And Rasmus with a fantastic birdie tap-in. Well, Stays we're moving two, on. Two behind Seppo. Yeah, not bad. Still in the heat of it. This one could have a good little swing here. As we see a par four, hole four, 145 meters. Got that low ceiling just a little ways off the tee. Low flex air shot is one way to do it. You could see a roller. I'm sure we're going to see a roller. Could get a bit aggressive. Try to go for the eagle. Either way, not too difficult of a par four. You need to get this birdie. I would agree. This is one of the more friendly par fours and definitely a chance to attack if you need the strokes. We see Rasmus here going for a big backhand flex line. Did that bounce off the tree like that? Just a kiss, Tony. My gosh. <laughs> that was an awesome now. drive. <laughs> that was here we probably go. one of the best air shots we've seen, but this is the attacking line. Come Cut on, roller over. to stand up. That's way down there. It's not by the basket, but it's easy approach. I would agree. That really gives you a lot of freedom on that short approach. We'll see Yesse with the forehand line. Oh, no. He's turned it over a little bit too much, but... <gasps> what is this? <laughs> a second kiss. Look, the woods on this hole have been friendly. The rollers that head to the right, they get a little bounce out. Some Air shots lead to the left, card back love to the over here. My gosh. All right, Seppo, let's see this. He's throwing a roller for sure. Oh, yeah. That's a. Uh, oh, oh, this that's is flipping up. turning over, too. Just oh, missed but not stuff. soon enough. Ah, it catches a little mound off the left fairway. Caught a hill of grass or something, up. a little hump in the ground. Unfortunately, would have liked to have seen where that ended up if it didn't hit anything. Yes, say with a big patent pending backhand and high. Yeah, I was going to say first of the round, I believe. 
Backhand Annie did catch the tree right next to the basket. We'll have to see how much he's obstructed from that. Oh, Seppo, jump putt, second shot. Okay, just laying it up nicely. Easy birdie. And good play by that by him to secure that easy three. Pity now. Mm, little wide, but needless to say, in the circle, six, seven meters out. Kind of won a little bit better from that, but... And I think well within his strong putting range. This Rasmus just stretches an arm out, swings the oh, leg back. With that ricochet off the tree, lucky boy. Oh, and yes, eh, from a tricky spot. Come on. Ah, he's giving it the right height. He's really letting him go. You know he wants every putt. I feel for you. All or nothing right now. Get it. It's nice to see someone attack full power. We'll see Piri now try to secure this. Oh, yeah. Laser nice beam. His putting has been on. Other than that... uh. Difficult OB playing in uh, hole two. His putting has been perfect all all round. It yeah, was throwing that got him in trouble so far. He's he's landed. I think every putt we've seen him have. Totally agree. the The side arms, I believe, are what's been messing with him the most. But it's early. Got lots of time to correct that. Lots of ground to be made. Mm, yes, say for a nice cleanup. Seppo should have a pretty routine par. Sorry, birdie. Yeah, that backhand roller really giving him all the distance to get right up there and have an easy approach and an easy putt as he taps in his birdie to go two down for the round. 23 under. It's a solid start when you got the lead. And now you got... Uh... Rasmus chasing you. He's still two behind. Got to keep it going. A couple extra strokes wouldn't hurt. number five got a little shorty here 88 meter par three slightly downhill going straight through a couple trees then heading left to right starting to make that right hand curve righty sidearm is the preferred shot here you can go turnover backhand but gotta make sure you get the ante on it the otherwise you basket can really go coming into play too here straight and go ob we did actually see, or hear of rather, in an earlier round, an ace on this hole. As we see Rasmus on the tee now. That would be pretty cool. I believe this is blind off the tee. Uh, just to throw it and hear the ching would be great. And Rasmus with a beautiful park job. Piri up now. Also, sidearm. No, it looked inside, but that was uh, absolutely he's... perfect. <laughs> he got the backstop, which is nice. That little pile there behind the basket. We'll see Seppo now. Try and match that. Yeah, that's next level uh, aim right there if you're shooting Control. for those rocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but an early release for Seppo, and he connects rightwards, kicking him into the trees. That's a bad miss to make. That's not where you want to go. Left side is much more friendly than the right side. But this is perfect. 
<laughs> yeah. Soft skip. Three out of four. That's good lead card setup right there. And I think about the what you'd see. This average two point seven on this par three. Yeah, I would. I would totally be agreeing with that. Wow! Look, look at, at that, that touch. Just effortless wide straddle. Any backhand, so low to the ground as well. Perfect amount of glide. I'd be curious Great. what disc that is that he could do that kind of shot with it. Would you say the flight looked like a Sonic? No, it wasn't. I don't think it was fastback, but I think it was something relatively understable, let's say. Great. Putt by Rasmus to secure his fourth birdie through five holes. We'll see Yesay now. Try to find his third. There we go. Back on track. Notice he went to a staggered putt instead of his normal straddle. I think both are important tools to have as a top-level disc golfer. Sometimes the slope or the stance is just required. I like to see him be flexible as we see our leader there tap in his par. He does lose a stroke to the other players. We'll see if Piri now can find that as well. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say he can find the basket. Oh, go. he got it. <laughs> I'm psychic sometimes. I know. Impressive stuff. You don't have to tell me. I already know. Clairvoyant even. <laughs> <laughs> Hole number six. Far 309 meters. Straight and flat off the tee. Then we head up the hill. Dog leg right. Got to make it either through this gap on the line of trees or go over the top. We've been seeing a lot of backhand Anheusers that pan out into the basket. Or you could see a little nose up sidearm. Heiser shot. Kind of whatever you can feel most comfortable with on this. This is a weird angle to hit. The forehand obviously naturally crashes the tree line more, but difficult to get the height you're kind of... Difficult to get the height the and the line. distance as well. But Rasmus there just drops it in, ignores everything we're saying, and throws a pure yeah. hyzer directly into the bullseye. He looked like he gave it about 40% and just like, oh, I kind of sawed it off there, and then it was perfect. The most casual 109 uphill you'll see. And Piri does not go over, opts for the through gap, and does not get through. But even He'll judging those long, two shots, Rasmus has looked like nothing. Piri actually looked like he threw that thing, and he's way we'll short. See, we'll see Yesse now, who... Pretty casual forehand game. I mean, absolutely hits that gap dead center, slides up to about five meters. That is also a bullseye. Yeah, that's the bread and butter for Yesse, though. He's just licking his chops at this hole. Seppo here, coming up. Anheuser. Let's see if he can get enough angle. Looks like a bit overcooked. I'm wrong. <laughs> Cooked to perfection. <laughs> yep, that was absolutely gorgeous. He landed it right on the dry patch to slide it instead of roll it. Oh, Petey catching the flag. Petey nice might point. lose one to the whole card with this one. I would not expect that. But Rasmus with a beautiful throw and then putt. He is really earning the strokes he is here. Now four down. Look at that. He has five birdies through six. Jeez. Not one par. Not, not one a single par. par. That's how you know he's going for it. He is mm -hmm. now tied with Seppo, although Seppo has not made his putt here yet for this brief moment. <laughs> yes, for this In moment time. of uh, mystery. Oh, it was dead center. Okay. Whew. Got worried how, for a minute. How could you know? <laughs> Sometimes you never know. Sometimes. Do you think Piri can make this putt? Oh, okay. <laughs> that that like... one was, that one was, you're killing me, you know, who knew? That was maximum effort given. <laughs> Hole seven. Good stuff. 
Back to the par fours, 189 meters. This is a tough, tough tee shot. Gotta get it long enough to get around those little trees. Right around those two white ones would be perfect. Setting up for the second throw. Late gap, coming into the forest about 30 meters in as the basket tucked in there, all sorts of trees around it. This is a tough hole. This is a tough par four to get. There is no doubt this was the second hardest today statistically. We have seen a few players just dissect it with two perfect throws, but with the gaps being late on both of them, you need pinpoint precision and consistency. We'll see Rasmus up first with a big hyzer angle. He'll be looking to cash, crash through that gap. Yeah, that's the right miss, I feel, is just try to get the gap perfect, but go long, if anything, and then hit a little early. He's got a bit more meat to deal with on the second shot, but he's in the fairway. Let's see how Yese navigates this with the forehand. Such a small mistake there could amplify his problems, but he seems to have put it in the fairway. I'm not sure if he reached the mouth of the gap. I don't think he got quite there yet, but you never know. We saw in previous rounds, there's that inside, like way left gap that you can hit. Seppo was there, I believe, round two. And so it it could be possible. He could have something. That's great placement. He'll have an almost straight shot up to the green from there if he can split that first gap. Yeah, he will have a few of those little trees to contend with, but shouldn't be too bad. Piri looking way up to the sky. Nice hyzer. Oh, this is perfect. And big finish. He is right up there just behind those two trees as well. In pretty prime placement. A few, very few get past those two, but right where they are offers a great opening angle. Yeah. Um, is the cameraman in danger? Okay, no. I was just debating if he was going to go inside route, but why would you oh. when you can do this? Look at him just butter the fairway. 50 My meters up gosh. there. Who? Through the cameraman's legs? What was that? That was incredible. <laughs> that was a beautiful little Anheuser sidearm flex out. We got Rasmus here, stand still, Anheuser backhand, coming up a little bit early, doesn't get all the way through the trees, but he is in the forest, so he might have an obstructed look for the birdie still. We'll see if Seppo can secure a good look for the birdie. We'll need a great approach through the woods here. Oh, he was a little cut off with that one white tree in front of him. Weird angle. Tried to tried to make it happen, and it almost worked, but just a bit inside. You see Piri now with a nicer angle through those two. Yeah. And he slides that up, gets a little bit of a ricochet, but he is certainly up there and putting for his birdie. That was perfect. Position A on the tee shot and an awesome executed second. He will be in the circle for his birdie. Rasmus almost capitalizing. Seppo almost oh, as I well. That was Holy dropping in. cow. That looks great the whole way. I think he floated it over. Seemed to float through behind. We'll see yes say now. Off a beautiful approach. He can focus. take this opportunity. Get it. Wow. That yes, position sir. off the tee, I I would think that that was maybe not even possible, but there we go. I'm sure that's like the only sidearm, sidearm birdie on this hole for the entire tournament. Probably maybe he not did it ever. yesterday. Maybe I don't know. Previous, maybe did it in previous rounds, but if there, I probably the only player to do it. For yeah, sure. I, I'm sure there's not many other guys that are trying that. That's crazy. As we see, Yese and Piri snag their birdies. Rasmus and Seppo get the par. Exciting. All right, well, let's move it to hole eight. Another par four, 187 meters. 
with the uphill tee shot going kind of through a little gap but you're more worried about that ob on the right hand side gotta get your disc to go out real far but it needs to go left at the end or else it will go ob set yourself up to this right left slanting green got to either sidearm hyzer softly into it or get that backhand to land a bit early and skip down the hill not an easy birdie yet again We'll see Yesse with the box now, birdieing the last three holes. A big turnover flight. Hopefully this holds long enough to stay out of out of bounds, but fades out yeah. early. And that's the trouble of throwing the forehand so uphill with a right to left shape. I mean, you got to question his motive on that one because he can backhand. I know he can. And this is just your standard hyzer better to be a little short and hyzer oh. out my oh. gosh Petey. bit of a sweat there great camera angle so but yeah hey you know he's the one at 21 under so he's doing something right and i'm sure these guys who throw those lines have had success with it in their practice rounds oh rasmus catching the bush on the left side fairway cutting his flight way short See if he goes for it on the second or if he's just got to lay it up. Oh, Seppo's going for some D. Oh, but he the, caught the some top branch too. Yeah, caused him to just lose a bit of spin. Heiser out early. I think he'll be close enough to the edge to straddle out and have a look. Mm, we'll have to see what he's got from there. Maybe he's, I don't know, he might have a bush in his way. Rasmus certainly wants all the distance here. Oh, yeah, full Throws flex. Nice and up on that hill, knowing he's going to get a big overstable finish down the hill, Whoa. and there you go. That is in the circle from way back. <laughs> so smooth. That was huge, huge shot. Well done, Rasmus, well done. Salka Rippi, Salka ripped that one as we see... Seppo, I believe, with a big straddle Anheuser forehand into the sky. Yeah, that was about his best case from that position. Really cut off with the tree in his way. Let's see if Yese can get up and down from here for par. It's looking like it's the right line. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It absolutely is the right line. He drew it up beautifully, curls it up to the basket. The forehand's definitely fighting the slope of the hill, but if you come in at too much of an angle, you have a higher chance of roll away. Piri now opting for the same shape. That was a little roll towards right there. Yeah, it's a little inside, but nonetheless, he is inside the circle, putting for birdie. As we see our leader here, very far out on his third. Pitches up, mm. up the hillside. But that is not an easy putt from there still. I think he still has a bit of work to do. I would agree. I think he might even be behind that bush. Should be just a little straddle out. Not really obstructed. But, oh, Rasmus, just too much want on that putt. Right off He's the top band. Just one stroke behind the leader as well. The door was wide open. Pity walks straight through it to go four under for the round. Great putt for his birdie. He's now that will eating tie up him up for Yesse. Yesse needs to make this to keep it tied at 21, which he does. Rasmus, this is four par. If you look at that bush there, Seppo is going to be quite close. <gasps> Whoa. Low left side, but she's in there. She's stuck. And is in. <clears throat> we see Seppo straddling out from that small obstacle tree. And makes sure to put in his par save. And does not lose a stroke to Rasmus, but he does to Piri. As these guys are chasing him down, we got one left to go on this front nine. 
Oh, we got a shorty to finish it off. 89 meter par three. Slightly uphill off the tee. Got that gap to hit though. Real tight gap off the tee. After that we go up and get onto the flat. Going left to right. Have OB behind the basket and left side. Most likely going to see a bunch of backhand and hyzer mid ranges. I'm sure Yese is going sidearm though. That's going to be a, a risky throw. You're going to have to push the OB to get to the pin. Pity up first. Nice Lee nose angle on his backhand. Get it. Hit it? Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love how we at the same time thought it's going in. What a throw. That was crazy that close was to going in. Perfection. I mean, just flexing out right at the perfect moment to just flash by the chain's right side. Let's see how Yese chooses to do this. Just a forehand hyzer. Skips it up there. That'll do. Not bad at all. Really no ground play from that. Got it to stall and fall from the T. Excellent. Excellent sidearm. Rasmus feeling a little bit inspired, throws a similar Ooh. forehand hyzer, gets a few leaves that slow him down, but on this hillside, he'll be putting himself up there for a putt. Yeah, a little bit short, but as we've seen Rasmus's putt, he doesn't really care if it's that short. Oh! As our leader connects with first available, if we're Whoa. being honest there. That is going to make his second shot basically really a tricky, whole new right? tee. Yeah, I mean, this is a whole new hole for him. And a harder one than the one he was just throwing with a mm -hmm. penalty stroke. Oh, oh look wow. at this. <laughs> yeah, I'll just save the All bar. Right. It's okay. It's okay. But this is door open for Rasmus to tie it up. No. That's two in a row off the top band. Three in a row, putting for birdie that he doesn't connect with. And for Piri, three in a row that he does connect with is he's now five under through the front nine. Look at that scorecard from Piri. Dang. What a strong front nine. He is on a mission. Not to mention this man here is also on a mission. Yese going six down on the front nine. Not a one bogey to speak of. Seppo now tapping in his par. To be fair, a great save after that unfortunate first shot. He is sitting at 24 under, still with a lead over his card mates here, but the field may have something to say about it. We'll find out shortly. Well, let's take a look. Again, we see it is tight at the top. Seppo is ahead by one at the moment. We haven't seen the chase card yet, but Piri and Yese are only two behind as well. But Seppo shot a three down. It's still a strong round. It may not be the hot round, but there you go. Still enough to keep him solidified in his first place position. Rasmus Alcoripi just chasing him, putting himself one stroke back. Yese Niminen and Piri tied for third. Mikhail Hemeyonis Alto. Get it. Minus six for Mikhail. Let's see it. It's a heated battle. I'm really excited to see how these last nine. nine holes are coming to me. Me too. Make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you on the back nine.